Hello and welcome into the Daily Score. We have a lot on this edition of the podcast because I got to spend the weekend at Bears Rookie Minicamp in Alice Hall in Lake Forest where, of course, there is a massive buzz because of the, the generational prospect in Caleb Williams from whom you will hear momentarily. Um, it was a great couple of days out here. You know, they don't do much in a rookie minicamp. There's there is no hitting. There's no pads. Uh, very little organized play in any way, shape, or form. Just a lot of drills, some seven-on-seven, a little bit of full team stuff, but just very, very little. It's really just to get the footing down, to get the playbook. But, you know, we did see Caleb Williams flinging the ball around and at times in the seven-on-seven, and we got to see the quick release and him going through a lot of the fundamental things. So it, it was cool in that way to actually start to see it in motion. Um, and Caleb Williams looked sharp in the things that they were asking him to do. And this is just step one. So there is nothing to completely overdo at this point. But I do want to take you through some of what I thought was important from the weekend, from some of the things the participants said. I want to start with the Bears head coach, Matt Eberflus, because he established something that maybe you were like, yeah, duh, but he established something about Caleb Williams right off the bat. Has he, been, has he been told that he's the, the starter going to training camp? Do you even have to have that conversation? No conversation. He's the starter. You know, that's so refreshing to hear because the Bears screwed around a lot with their previous first-round quarterback draft picks with Mitch Trubisky, um, having some having Mike Glennon in front of him at that time and having to earn his way, which to some degree I understand. Um, same thing with Justin Fields with Andy Dalton around. So it, you know, it's a situation where you needed to just hear that. Let us know things are being done differently here, whether it's because of the quarterback or because the Bears are doing things differently at this point and saying, yes, this young, ultra talented quarterback is going to be the starter from day one, which was the other day at this rookie camp that I'm covering. So no screwing around. I thought that, that that I wanted to set the base, that that is what is happening. Um, yeah, no, Tyson Bajan is not going to be pushing Caleb Williams for a starting spot anytime soon, nor is Brett Rippon. I hope that the depth is good in the quarterback room, but we know it is Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. It is his job. That said, I asked Caleb Williams what he wants to accomplish in the rookie mini camp and even to some degree in the off season program. I'm still learning everybody's names. <laughs> um, uh, diving into the playbook, um, getting to a point where um, there's certain things that I can, you know, teach some of the, the guys that, um, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's John Jack or Rome that they're not understanding that I may understand. So being able to, to, to teach is always big because uh, it's also another way for you to learn. Um, it also shows you how much that you know. Um, and so, uh, I, I would say those, and then, and then just being around the guys, enjoying the time together, uh, getting on the field, executing, um, and, 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 you know, being even killed throughout of it, throughout the whole thing, because, you know, I'm going to make mistakes and I don't really like mistakes, um, and messing up. And I know there's a bunch of guys also, they're going to be in the same position as me. So, um, you know, being in that position and, and being even killed and being controlled, cool, calm, collected, um, not only helps me, but also, uh, all the other guys on the yeah, and I saw that on the field. You know, one of the things, too, that you know, I've been asking a lot of guys about here with the Bears and coaches and assistants and whomever I can ask. I mean, to me, just putting myself in Caleb Williams' spot, who's a superstar already coming out of college, it may be difficult to – or one might suspect it could be difficult to – take direction or to feel discipline, especially with all the success that he had as far as being an improviser and, you know, those the off time throws and all of that kind of stuff that Caleb Williams was extremely successful at. And they won't take that stuff away from him, but there was such a big focus in this camp of just going through the fundamentals, the rudimentary stuff. Here's how we're going to do things, whether it's the, the footwork or working in a small space. Uh, they worked a ton on just 
cadences and draw, trying to draw guys off sides and getting the, the players used to his, literally used to his voice. And, you know, there are many times where I just see Caleb Williams with, you know, a couple of the coaches maybe around him working in about a five yard space and just doing fundamental things. So not that we didn't get to see him fling the football. I mean, we definitely got to see him, you know, in the part that they allow us to video. And I put some of this stuff up on Instagram, just the, the flow that he has with the football is, you know, so far so good. And I, I am trying hard not to overdo anything, but, you know, the watch the way he throws the ball, I'll just say I found to be very impressive. Next thing from Caleb Williams, one of the great things about this draft pick in general is that since the Bears have known uh, forever, basically, that they were going to draft Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams has had a head start as well as in he has had some of the what the Bears do and some of the terminology through his quarterbacks coach, Will Hewlett, who the Bears have referred to as an elite guy. He's not, not part of the Bears organization. He does that privately, works with quarterbacks. Caleb Williams loves the guy. And so he came into this rookie camp already ahead of where maybe the previous two Bears quarterbacks were. Well, for sure, just in terms of the language and the studies that he was able to do. And Caleb Williams also discussed that. Yeah, I mean, you want to you always want to get ahead if you can. Um, and so uh, with those things that they that they gave me, um, you know, I would I would take it to my QB training and we would use the cadence. We would use the drops. We would use all those things. Um, so that's not something that's on my mind throughout the process of when I actually got here. Um, and so uh, for sure, that's that's something that you always want um, and, and, and working on, you know, the drops, uh, the cadence and then also the route when you when you when you put it all together and, and training and things like that. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. I mean, he does. I mean, the guy's so confident to begin with. But I do get the feeling from talking to people out here that he is just ahead. And that, that has something to do with it. Just the fact that he comes in here and not to mention the meetings he's already had, the 30 visit, the dinner that he had with some of the players and the GM. Um, there was a comfort with Caleb Williams out here at Hallows Hall. This might have been the most impressive thing he said. You know, it, it is presumed that Caleb Williams will be a leader. He has to be. He is the quarterback of the Chicago Bears. But as Caleb Williams explained to us, that stuff is not going to come right away. To be a great leader, you got to learn how to follow first. So right now I'm following all the vets. I'm following all the coaches. Um, I'm listening, um, you know, having, having both ears open and, and, and my mouth shut. Um, you know, just just kind of sitting back listening, and then you know when I when I get to the point of of of, of you know when I learn everything, when I learn the ways of how we do it, the culture, um, the playbook, um, and 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 what the offensive line, wide receivers um, are all doing, running backs and, and tight ends and things like that, um, then you can start taking the lead, then you can start taking the helms of all of it, um, and 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 take the next steps. Uh, for right now, though, um, I'm, I'm listening more than I'm, I'm speaking and talking, um, and uh, and I'm taking it one step at a time, being the moment. I talked to awesome. the Bears. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. How could I talk over that part? That was uh, unprompted. Caleb Williams walking off the stage, and I was sitting as close to him as anybody, and uh, just because the Bears, like I love the buy-in, the bear claw thing. Like he he seems to like being a bear as do a lot of these rookies. But what I was going to say is I talked to the, the quarterbacks coach, Kerry Joseph, who's going to be a very important part of the development. And he said that this guy asked tons of questions. He, he kept on talking about him texting him like at 1030 on Saturday night saying, hey, why are we doing this? Or what's this all about? Or what's the, like, he wants to know the whys, uh, not to bring up Matt Nagy. But I think that that's a really cool thing that, you know, he's you know, sitting in his place in wherever it is on the North shore at 10 30 at night on a Saturday. And he's like looking at, you know, page 63 of the playbook. And he's like, why are we doing this? So that's great stuff, man, that he wants to learn this stuff fast so he could have a fast start. And when the veterans arrive, he can be caught up and on the same page as those guys, because they presumably would be ahead of them as well. One more thing from Caleb Williams before you get to hear from Roman Dunze. Um, the, Another thing about Caleb is he's an incredibly sociable guy. You've probably seen him out in some of the videos that we've shown at been at the Cubs game. He was at a Chicago sky uh, preseason game. 
Um, he was at he was seen at Target and, and embracing it. So he talked about his philosophy in terms of all of that and why he's doing that. I would say it's a part of it. Um, you know, when you have a little bit of free time, you want to find balance uh, within all of this. Um, that's that's really important. Uh, you know, and then and then the other part of it is just just getting around, trying to eliminate a bunch of things. Uh, like you said, going to Target that was for. You know all of the all of the you know installs and small things that I needed, um, and I thought it was just a funny picture uh, the way I was walking. But um, no, I uh, it's it, it's it's all of it. You know, all of it goes together um, to enjoy find a find a, a good balance, but also um, in a sense um, get get acclimated to the area, the land, and things like that. Embrace it. That's the word for Caleb Williams. You know, with all the stuff that was talked about in terms of uh, if there are any red flags about his personality or the way he comports himself or even his desire to play with the Chicago bears when all of that crap was going on. Now it's like the complete converse. Like he, he, he has embraced it. He wants to be seen. um, And that's just been his, his total and complete demeanor. So that's Caleb Williams for now. We'll hear a ton from him in the coming weeks. All right, let's move on to the Bears' first-round wide receiver, Roma Dunze, who I should point out missed the Saturday practice due to a tight hamstring. That was according to the Chicago Bears. He was out there. He was present. I didn't notice any kind of a limp or anything like that. Um, we know that the Bears, judging from last year, very cautious with injuries. So I, I'm guessing it's not a big deal, but it's definitely worth mentioning. A couple of questions for Roma Dunze, starting with the new offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron. How would you describe Shane's offense? I think it's explosive. You know, it's, it's very, you know, pro style, you know, um, uh, allows you to, you know, have deep shots, intermediate shots, short passes, quick game, um, all the aspects of offense that I think you need to have versatility and have success to uh, keep the defense on their toes. Bro, DJ told, uh, DJ Moore told Kay Adams the other day that it's going to be a race to a thousand yards that block room. Can you give us a little insight into the competitive spirit of the wide receiver room now with yourself, Keenan, and DJ? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly what it is. It's a very competitive environment. You know, I think um, for me, the mindset uh, uh, I think I I want in a wide receiver room is everybody to think they're wide receiver one, you know, and that's the mindset that I bring to a a wide receiver room. And it's a a friendly competition, you know. At the end of the day, I want the best for for the brother beside me, and I'm going to, you know, run every route and, and do every concept, you know, to perfection, even if, you know, I'm the main reader or if they're the main read because I think that's what it's about when when, when concerning a, a brotherhood within the room. So definitely, I think, you know, that competitiveness, I mean, they've been doing it for a long time, so I got a, a, a ways to catch up here. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to provide, you know, a different skill set and, and a different uh, versatility aspect to the offense that I hope, you know, uh, complements their play. Yep. I mean, I do love hearing it. Roma Dunze, just completely impressive. And Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator, is going to use lots of wide receivers. And this team will be, I don't know if like I'm ready to say pass first, but probably pass first. And there's going to be just so many different options. Um, again, because it's rookie minicamp, we don't know exactly how it all lines up at this point. And there's a lot of undrafted guys out here as well. So um, in terms of getting an idea of everything that Roma Dunze is doing, it's difficult. But the plays, the balls that were thrown to him, he made the plays on Friday. So far, so good for Roma Dunze as well. So that's going to be it for today's edition of the Daily Score. Tomorrow, though, you're definitely going to want to tune in because we will hear from Shane Waldron, the Bears offensive coordinator. And you know what? We're going to hear from all. They're going to hear from the new defensive coordinator, Eric Washington, and our guy, Richard Hightower, the special teams coach. That's going to be tomorrow on the Daily Score. Thank you all for listening. I always appreciate it. And for our executive producer, Ray Diaz, I'm Mark Grody. Have a great day. 